<laughs> All right, man. This is the part four, I believe. Uh, what up, though? It's your boy Fire, man. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hop back into this. Excuse me. In areas such as southeastern Virginia, the low country of the Carolinas, and around Galfin Town, near Savannah, Georgia, communities of Afro Indians begin to arise. The term musty came to distinguish between those who share African and Native American ancestry from those who were a mixture of European and African. Even after 1720, Black and Red Carolinians continued to sh share slave quarters. Man, it's a place in my, in, my, in my city called Porter's Quarters. And guess what? The railroad tracks are right down the street from it. Man, I'm gonna bring out so much uh, uh, modern day slave um, uh, marks that you can see throughout my city, man. I'm talking about everything that's Indian and Negro. You're gonna see it in my city. But let us continue. Continue to share slave quarters and intimate lives. Many wills continue to refer to all my slaves, whether Negroes, dang, what's out there, thunder. Hey, boy, turn that light off. Whether Negroes, Indians, Mustis, and Mulattoes, the death and complex complexity of this intermixture are revealed in a 1740 slave code in South Carolina that ruled all Negroes and Indians, free Indians, well, free Indian. Okay, we already passed that. In an um, amity, in amity with the government, and Negroes, Mulattoes, and Musto Mustizos, who are now free accepted okay basically saying all of them mulattoes and mustias who are now or shall hereafter be in this province and all the issue and offspring shall shall be and they are hereby declared to be and remain hereafter absolute slaves so we're saying that everybody is supposed to remember I showed you my videos, man. Certain Indians, uh, they were in they were put in slavery for literally four days. That makes sense. You indebted to you gotta make somebody's shoes and you you a slave until you get done making somebody's shoes. That's the type of stuff they did. Say say a Negro owed somebody, uh say they you know how they did with the sharecropping, man. Say a, a, a so-called white man gave a Negro a jacket. And now he made, he bought $6 for the jacket. Now he making the Negro pay $10 and he indebted to him until it's over. It's the type of stuff they did, man. But let us continue. As early as the latter years of the 19th century, et ethnologists cited the deep relationship between African Americans and Native Americans, James Mooney in 1897. This is around the same time they started indoctrinating niggas, putting Negroes in school, in Catholic schools down here in, in Florida. I keep telling y'all, man, my name is Ramonda LaCasey, and I am a Negro. How in the, my daddy name was Ramonda LaCasey, and his daddy name was Ramonda LaCasey. My brother right now, he named my brother Ramondo LaCasey. I don't know why they did this. I don't know why the fuck he did this. But for some strange reason, I might name my Ramondo LaCasey. I don't know. But let us continue. It is not commonly known that in all southern colonies, Indian slaves were brought and sold and kept in servitude and worked in the field side by side with Negroes. Oh, it ain't Africans no more, huh? It's Negroes, huh? Let's continue. Up to the time of the revolution. Furthermore, at the coast tribes, the window, they were compelled to associate. So they basically tricked the tribes that ain't enslaved yet. Let's continue. To associate and intermarry with the Negroes until they finally lost their identity and were classified with that race. So that a considerable proportion of the blood of the southern Negroes is unquestionably Indian. Say what? Let me uh, let me go through that again. Excuse me. Furthermore, as the coast tribes dwindled, 
they were compelled to associate and intermarry with the Negroes until they finally lost their identity and were classified with that race. So that a considerable proportion of blood of the Southern Negroes, Negroes is unquestionably Indian. In his 1937 doctoral dissertation, James Hugo Johnson, man, I'm going to just start saying the devil, excuse me, demons, demons, because they're children of the devil. But let us continue. Asserted, the end of Indian slavery came with the final absorption of the blood of Indian by the more numerous Negro slaves. Oh, they ain't Africans now? Hey, go get my phone out of that room and out of the, out of the kitchen, man. The kitchen. I'm gonna pause this, man. I might have some business to take care of, handle, man. I'm coming back at you for sure, though. All right, I'm back, man. Uh, uh, let me go ahead and finish some of the rest of this. Um, the do oh, okay, I know why it's at the end of Indian slavery came with the final absorption of the blood of the Indian. By the more numerous Indian slave, but the blood of the Indian did not become extinct in the slave states. For it continued to flow in the veins of the Negro. The Indian blood continued to flow in the veins of the Negro. Mm. That's why we got to switch our names, huh? But let's continue. Increasingly toward the end of the century, Africans began to flee slavery. Not a Africans, Negro, African, African. And which one is it? Because if you say Africans, why you don't say Kenyans? And why when you say more, you say more? Linking them to a, spe a specific place in Africa. So, hey, what up? All right, man, go ahead and do your thing. I'm doing something. Uh, okay. Increasingly toward the century, the African began to flee slavery in larger numbers uh, to settle among the Indian in their... Hey, go open that front door. I got to handle something right quick, man. Y'all hold on. Hey, keep your voice down a little piece. All right, man, just had to make a little sense. Uh, let me tell you. <sighs> okay, uh, I know where I was at. Okay. Africans began to flee slavery in larger numbers to settle, a, to settle among the Indians in their immediate vicinity, and in doing so became the mediums of exchange for the non-indigenous culture. Therefore, by the time that John Merritt arrived among the Cherokee in the middle of the 18th century, that's the 1900s, ain't it? The 18th century? So like 19, oh, let's continue. There is little doubt that, that the Cherokee had some prior exposure to both Africans and Christianity. So now Christians are a race? Is that what they're trying to say? Is it Africans or Negroes? Which one is it? Which one? Let's continue. Amaret was brought before the king of the Cherokee. So it was a king that his fate might be determined. He was witness to the Cherokee in their native tongue. All right, man. I'm, I'm all right. I'm coming back with the next part after I upload this.